going on everybody it's Stas here welcome back to another video so the stock market didn't do too well today guys s p 500 down 0.7 percent the dow down 0.7 percent and guess what you guessed it the nasdaq 100 also went down about 0.7 percent on the day and in this video we're going to be talking more about the stock market breaking down some technicals going over a bunch of stocks that i'm looking to buy right now and I want to share with you guys what I've been doing in the stock market as of late, an earnings report here from Foot Locker, and in general where my head is at right now as a trader and as an investor. So make sure to hit that like button for me, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget, do not forget guys, to get your four free stocks from Webull valued up to $1,600. That actually runs out here at the end of November. So use my link, deposit $100, and make sure to leave me a comment letting me know what four free stocks you guys end up getting. So let's get into it. S&P 500 today, again, down 0.7%. And you guys can see here on the hourly chart, a couple of different things going on. Number one, we could be seeing the start of a head and shoulder pattern forming here, right? Left shoulder, the head right here, the neckline at about 35.85, and the right shoulder could be starting to form as of right now. And another thing we're seeing, we also see a pretty big resistance like we've been talking about here in the past couple of videos. This is a big level I've been mentioning at about 35.85 to about 35.90, right? And if I zoom in a bit here on the five day, five minute, you guys can see exactly how strong of a resistance this is. And if you guys remember yesterday, we ended up selling off on the S&P we held 35.45, 35.50 on yesterday's morning's sell-off, which is another big level, 35.45. And we actually filled the gap throughout the day all the way up to 35.85, and we closed right under that level, right? And like I said yesterday, and I'll say it again right now, I was looking for heading into today whether the S&P was going to break 35.85 and try to fill the gap up to 36.25, which is the next resistance here, or was it going to get rejected, sell off from 35.85 and potentially take out the lows from yesterday at about 35.45? And now that Friday session is obviously over and we can see how things ended up playing out. We did not break 35.85. We got rejected there and then we ended up selling off throughout the entire day pretty much continuing the downtrend that we've been in over the past one, two, three trading days in the market. And at this point, we're trading within the same channel we were in yesterday, 3545 support, 3585 resistance, right? And we can see here on the hourly, if we end up selling off to 3545 next week, and maybe if we break that level and fill the gap down to 35. 20, 35, 15, which is another big level, that would be the completion of this head and shoulder that I mentioned a minute ago, right? So this is very key. This is very key to keep an eye on 35.45 if that breaks. We're likely, in my opinion, to fill the gap down, maybe see another 25-point drop in the S&P, maybe 0.7% down to complete that head and shoulder. And then again, at 35.15, that's going to be another pivotal point because if we break that, that is where we could see an even bigger sell off and we might end up filling the gap. Let me extend this trend line to the right here. You guys can see it. If we break 3515, we might just go straight down to 3465, which is the next gap to fill, which could be another drop of let's say 1.4% or about 50 points here down on the S&P. That is if 3515 does end up breaking next week. So be careful guys. Overall, I mean the trend is looking a bit bearish. I mean, especially the shorter term trends here, five day, five minute, and especially if we break 3545. So be, be ready for a sell off. I think it's possible that we do end up seeing a bit of a correction here, maybe not 20%, 10, 15%, but five to seven percent. Hey, I think it is very possible, especially with what's going on right now in the world and especially in the USA with everything involving the CV, right, rising cases, 
people in, in different states, you know, different states, not people, different states here are shutting down certain certain businesses, restaurants, restrictions, all that stuff is coming back, right? So this could end up negatively affecting the stock market, and we're and, and honestly, we're already seeing the beginning of it. And another thing worth mentioning is we've ran so much since the beginning of November, guys. Take a look. I mean, the S and P's gone from thirty two fifty to thirty six fifty in the span of a week two weeks, that's a run of 11%, right? So the fact that we're selling off a bit here from the peak, let's see how much we've fallen here from the peak. We're only down about 2.6%, 2.7%. That is still a healthy little pull down at this point. But again, we might go down even further. But all I'm trying to do is give you guys perspective so you can sit back and be like, okay, we've ran so much. We're seeing a spike in the you-know-what the market's selling off a bit, it makes sense, right? It makes sense at the end of the day. So keep an eye on those levels, 35.15, 35.45, and 34.60 here on the S&P 500. And when it comes down to SPY, SPY, which tracks the S&P 500, you're noticing a lot of the same, right? Head and shoulder potentially forming, neckline at about 358.00. Left shoulder here, head right here, right shoulder could be forming, especially since we're not breaking out of 358. We're struggling under that level of resistance. And the second we take out 353 on the downside, we break that level. I think we're going to fill the gap down to first. 351.50. That could be the completion of the right shoulder. And honestly, if we break down below 351.50, we may be going down to 350, uh, ra rather 345.70, which gives SPY here maybe 2%, 1.5 1 to 2% downside from where it is right now. So be careful here, guys. We might be selling off a bit here. That's what the short term technicals, at least, are are telling me, and I'd love to know what you guys have to think about that down below. But even though we're, and the funny thing, guys, even though we're selling off here, we're still seeing some stocks crush it. As you guys can see here in my watch list, there is a lot of green in my swing and active watch list here, um, which we'll go over in a second here. So stay tuned. And when it comes down to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, we sold off under a big level of support a couple days ago, 29,700. We failed holding that. Now we're trading down towards the next level of support coming up, 29,000. And if I zoom in a bit here on the 10 day, 30 minute chart, you guys can see another head and shoulder maybe forming here, right? Let me pull out my, my nice handy dandy little square tool. Where is it here, guys? Here we go, right? Left shoulder here on the 10-day, on the 30-minute, if you guys can see it, right? If it lets me do it, there we go. Left shoulder there. Then we have the head right here. And this could be the start of the right shoulder, especially if we sell off down to 29,000. And we end up breaking 29,000 and maybe filling the gap down to 28,300, right? So a couple levels on the Dow, I'm watching 29,000 flat as support. And resistance we can see here is at about 29,600. 700. And when it comes down to the good old tech heavy NASDAQ 100, we're not so much seeing a head and shoulder form here. At least I'm not really seeing it um, right here. I mean, I guess you could be saying, all right, this might be a little head and shoulder right here. I guess you could say it is. But what we're seeing overall is an overall resistance at about 12,000. We failed breaking out of 12,000 today. We tested it, but we failed breaking out of there. And that is where the NASDAQ 100 has been struggling really ever since the 11th of this month, ever since the 11th of November. We struggled at 11,970, 12,000 once, twice, three times here, you know, throughout the beginning of this week. And now again on Thursday, Friday, and now we're selling off. So I can see the NASDAQ go down, NASDAQ 100 here go down maybe to about 11,850. It could test that. And if that breaks, that is where we could see a bit of a further sell off on the NASDAQ. But quite honestly, I don't see a big crash happening, a big sell-off happening, just a little healthy pullback, right? Like I said earlier in the video, 4 5 maybe 7% at the most, maybe 10%. I don't even think we'll get down 10% at this point in time. But again, that's just my opinion, right? And I'd love to know what you guys have to think down below in the comments. So make sure to leave me a comment 
on the market. What are you guys doing? Are you buying? Are you selling? Are you holding out for next week? Maybe for the next couple of weeks? I would love to know. And when it comes down to earnings, earnings season is slowly fizzling away. But don't worry, guys. It will be back before the blink of an eye here in, in the next couple of weeks. We'll be back in earnings season. But one that we're going to talk about today is Foot Locker, ticker symbol F. L. And if you guys remember, last earnings report was a pretty big surprise for Foot Locker. We got a bit of news before the previous earnings report that they were going to have a good earnings. The stock ended up going up from 27 then all the way to 35, sold off. They reported earnings. A couple days later, the stock ended up running all the way back, breaking out of 35, and has pretty much been on an uptrend ever since that previous earnings report, right? Going from 27 and just recently it hit a high of $44. So what a run here on Foot Locker. And they ended up doing well yet again. EPS came in at $1.21 versus 62 cents estimated. So almost a double up. Actually, is that a double up? Yeah, it's a double up in earnings. EPS, unbelievable there uh, compared to the estimates. Revenue came in at $2.11 billion versus $1.94 billion estimated, so a beat there in revenue. And when it comes down to these types of companies, you know, McDonald's, Foot Locker, you know, restaurants especially, retail stores, what you want to look at is same store sales, right? What do you want to look at? Same store sales. Keep that in mind. And Q3 same store sales for Foot Locker were up 7.7% year over year. Hey, I'll take that in, in the situation that we're in right now which obviously you guys know what's going on right now. So Foot Locker doing great. Double B. Same store sales 7.7%, but they did not provide full year 2020 guidance. And I'm not sure why they didn't. A lot of companies actually aren't doing that because the earnings, the revenue in the situation that we're in right now for a lot of companies, it's all over the place, right? They're all over the place. So they can't really determine, okay, what's going to happen in the next couple of quarters. It's difficult. So we're not seeing them provide us guidance, but either way, they did well in earnings, right? From a, from a brief glance there. And the stock ended up selling off about 5% today and it's down about at this point five bucks off the high that it was at pre-market today $44 right it sold off to about $39 so this could be a dip buy in Foot Locker in my opinion we are holding that 50 SMA on the four hour chart if that breaks, we might fill the gap down to the 180 SMA on the four hour chart, right around, let's say, $37. So either $37.40, $37.50, or let's say $39. Either of these could be strong entries, in my opinion, with Foot Locker. And you could be asking yourself, Stas, why did Foot Locker go down since they they reported great earnings? Isn't, they, isn't the stock supposed to go up when they report great earnings? Well, the truth is when a stock goes up so much, like Foot Locker has in the past quarter, they're pretty much pricing in perfection. And Honestly, that's what I think Foot Locker stock was pricing in, right? It was running up like crazy, and the earnings report, yeah, it was great, but let's say it, it, you know, it wasn't a grand slam. Let's just put it that way. It wasn't a phenomenal earnings report that blew our hats off. And in that situation, a lot of the time you see, okay, the stock sells off a bit. There's some profit taking. This is all normal market fluctuation. And that's, that's what I'm seeing here with Foot Locker, honestly. And I'd love to know your thoughts down below. But overall, I think $37 to $40, anywhere in that range, it very well could be a dip buy here on Foot Locker. And I almost forgot, guys. Did I just skip the trading update? Oh, my goodness. I'm doing things backwards in today's video. Well, honestly, there's not much of a trading update since I didn't do anything new today. I'm just pretty much sitting on my positions. And speaking of my positions, Workhorse, guys. Oh, my goodness. Workhorse. WKHS ended up going up 13% percent up three dollars per share today and it filled the entire gap that we called out yesterday and the previous couple of videos guys ever since we broke 22 bucks i've been calling out workhorse is going to fill the gap most likely nothing's 100 guaranteed but i was calling out that the next gap to fill 
is up to 25 bucks, and we did exactly that. We broke out of $25, and we went all the way up to 25.80, closed above that level of old resistance as support, and it seems like, guys, the next level we could get to, I know it's crazy, but it's true, is around $28.30. And I'm not sure if we're going to go straight there since the stock is a bit overbought at this point. It's in need of a pull down, but looking at previous movements, I mean, it's gone straight up in a straight line in the past, right, with minimal pull downs. So, then again, I wouldn't be surprised if it did go straight up to $28.30. So, at this point, guys, I added workhorse a couple days ago, added into my position at 1950. I originally had uh, had shares at $24, so now I'm well in the green on my workhorse position, right? My average cost is about 22 bucks, right? And now we're trading a little bit shy of 26. So next week I might take a little bit of profit if we do get to my first target here at $28, which is my first sell target, but I'm not really looking to, to offload the shares quite yet because there's a big announcement potentially coming up, right? Back in October, we saw how the, the USPS contract date was pushed back. That ended up you know, dropping the stock's price here heavily from 30 bucks down to about 15. And they, they said, USPS, they're going to come out with an announcement at some point in December. And each day that goes by, we get closer and closer to December. There's more anticipation and the days are ticking, right? The days are ticking. The likelihood that we get an announcement each day that goes by goes higher and higher, right? And that's why Workhorse is going up. And it's really because people are anticipating them getting the contract. And to play devil's advocate here, if they don't get the contract, that's the gamble that we're all in here uh, if we're owning Workhorse. If they don't get the contract, that is 100% going to be a big blow in the short term, right? Which is why I kind of do want to lock in some profits, like I said, right? Just to play it safe. But I also want to hold on to some shares in case they do get the contract because in that case, whether they get half of it, all of the contract, I think the stock's going to blow past $32, $31.50, which is the resistance here. So uh, so those are some, uh, some thoughts there on Workhorse. I'm holding on strong. And Apple, I'm also in still which is doing well for me. I'm in at about 112. We're trading at about 117 here. So I'm looking to maybe offload some shares, like I've been saying, at about $127. SLV is also one that I'm in right now, which did well today, up 0.3%. Silver ended up going up 17 cents per ounce today. Silver is trying to make its move back up to about the mid-20s, high 20s, and that's kind of where I think it's going to be going. Honestly, I think silver has potential back up to $30 per ounce. And I'm also still in EA, which is a longer term swing trade for me. And it did pretty well today up 1.4% on the day. So overall, guys, that is what I'm in right now. Apple Workhorse, SLV and EA. And guys, let me tell you, although I didn't lock in profits today, I made a good amount of money on those positions, especially Workhorse. Again, it went up 13%. Um, today, but like you guys know, it's not a profit until you lock it in. So we'll see what happens next week and uh, we'll take it from there. So let me know down below what are you guys doing. Drop a comment. And if you guys are enjoying the video, hit that like button for me. Subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. We're trying to get 20,000 subscribers here before the end of 2020. And I really think we can do it. I really think we can do it. But we obviously are all have to pitch in. Well, you guys have to pitch in since I can't hit the like button on hundreds of uh, you know accounts here, right? So let's talk about some other stocks here. Starting off with Tesla, TSLA. Tesla ended up going past 460 this past week, right? Broke that resistance like butter. It filled the cap up to 500 like butter. Now we're selling off down to about 490. And quite honestly, guys, I think Tesla could sell off even further. I think we might go down and Honestly, I'm hoping it goes down. And like I tell you guys, don't hope and pray and uh, have biases in the market. Play the technicals. And the technicals at this point 
are looking like, hey, we're getting rejected at a 510. We might be going lower. We might go down to test 460 by the looks of it. And the fact that Tesla was down about 2% today, and maybe it goes down next week, it gaps down. We could be at 460 at, in no time. And I think 460 would be a very strong entry point, especially if it were to hold that old resistance as support and curl back up to try and fill the gap back up to 500. And I think 460 could be call option option territory, meaning call options might be a move there, maybe some further out, maybe two months out for about a 480 strike if we get to 460, right? And I, and I have to look at the options chain here for Tesla, but at 460, I'd consider shares and maybe some, you know, options contracts a little bit dated out. We'll see how that ends up going down. But Tesla here, it's looking good on a pull down. I would like to pick up shares anywhere from 460, 470, right? That could be an opportunity. And Amazon today is pretty beaten down, no doubt about it. Amazon is down half a percent today, went down. And overall, I mean, guys, it's been down the past couple of weeks, down from 3,500 to about 3,000. And it's interesting. We're heading into holiday season right now. We're in a recession. And we don't know what the sales are going to be looking like throughout the holiday season compared to previous holiday seasons. Let me tell you, if we get reports that the sales are a lot worse this season than they were last season, the season before, that could be a blow to the stock's price here. And I'm not sure, it very well could be, but I'm not sure if it's pricing in a weak holiday season coming up. I'm not sure. Again, it could be, but... Then again, on the other side, the flip side, if they have a strong season better than expected, this stock could end up ripping, going bananas, maybe back up to the mid-3,000 territory. So if we're just looking at basic support resistance levels here on Amazon, I mean, we're holding 3,000, no doubt about it, the past couple of trading days we have been, but we haven't really gotten the upwards momentum out of 3160, which is a big resistance here stemming back from a couple weeks, couple months, right? Honestly, 3160 to 3200, that general area has been resistance. So I actually wouldn't really touch Amazon until 3200 were to break. I think from that point up to about uh, you know, 3,500, that could be a move of about 10%. And another thing worth noticing or mentioning rather here on Amazon is, yeah, the holiday sales might not be great. But then again, if we're going into lockdown, more people are going to be buying on Amazon. More people are going to do holiday shopping on Amazon. So that's the tricky thing. That's really the tricky thing, right? There's so many moving parts. We're in a recession. Holiday shopping could be poor. But then again, I mean, if we go down in a lockdown, more people are going to be shopping on Amazon. So it's very difficult to to really play this out in, in your head, right? And try and figure out, okay, how, th how are things going to work out? But like I say always, I'll say it again, play the trend, play what's right in front of you. And at this point, we're still downtrending and we need to see confirmation out of 3,200, 3,150. And if we do get that, hey, we could see a short-term trade, maybe anywhere from between 3,200 to 3,300 to 3,500, right? So those are some thoughts there on Amazon. And another one here I'm looking at is at home group, ticker symbol H-O-M-E. And this one's been a wild ride. Talk about a wild ride. From a dollar back in the pits of the crisis, from a dollar in the middle of March, guys, unbelievable. It went all the way to $24. Could you imagine just putting your whole account there? Obviously, hindsight's 2020, but could you imagine putting your whole account into at home group? back in March and just letting it coast till right now, you would have made a lot of money, right? But that's not reality. We can't do that. We don't have a time machine. And quite honestly, guys, that takes the fun away from it. Even if I had a time machine, I don't think I would go and just, you know, put my money into all the stocks I think are going to go up because that just takes away the thrill, the fun of it. And that might just be me. You might think I'm crazy, but that's just the truth. I would not Honestly, I'd rather just have the thrill of knowing or not knowing what's going to happen, right? But anyway, at home at this point, 
is trading pretty interestingly, right? You guys notice it's it's at a sixteen dollar and fifty level resistance right now. It's still under the one eighty SMA here on the four hour chart. Uh, chart, although it did break the fifty SMA, and we're at that sixteen fifty level. So I think it's actually on the verge. I don't want to say it's on the verge of breaking out, but I think if we could take out the high from here the 5th of November at about 1860 1850 I think there could be a lot of momentum out of there out of that level right because that would be out of the getting us out of that 180 SMA 4 hour chart and a big resistance at 1850 and we could see a move there up to about $22 $23, right? Because we'd be in the horizontal, overall the horizontal channel here on the four hour. And plus we have earnings coming up on the 1st of December and who the heck knows what they're going to report in earnings. I don't really track the company like that, but I think overall there could be some upside here, especially if that technical level breaks and even from here, 1650 up to 1860, and if 1860 breaks up to the low 20s. So at home is looking pretty decent right here. And if we pull back to the four hour chart, I mean, there's even more upside there. If we look back at the levels it was at in the June month of 2018, I mean, it was at $40 per share. So keep an eye on at home, 16, 40, 50, up to 18, 50, up to low 20s. I think that is possible here. And Alibaba, guys, Alibaba today, up to 270, up 4% on the day we broke out of 265 we broke out of the 50 sma on the four hour chart two big resistance levels and now it looks like we're getting a full head of steam momentum is shifting to the bull side up to about 290 298 300 i think this is where baba could be headed right overall the whole situation with ant the ipo the whole government over there in china what's going on with that i think it might have gotten a bit blown over over, uh, blown out of proportion here with Alibaba stock price down over 20%. And this is a, a, a healthy bounce back, right? It's you guys notice, you know, when the markets go up a ton, pullbacks are healthy and it works the opposite way. When the market goes down a ton or a stock goes down a ton, little bounce backs, little relief rallies are healthy. And that's what we're seeing here with Baba. So I'm watching it here anywhere from 265, 270 upwards to 285, maybe upwards to 300 bucks. I really like Alibaba there. And let's talk about Slack technology, guys. We called this thing out up 5.5 percent today up a dollar 50 we saw yesterday how it filled the gap up from 26 to 28 dollars which we also called out and i said watch out for the 28 dollar break if it breaks that point we could see a runner maybe back up to the low 30s we haven't gotten there yet but i think we're gonna get to the low 30s this, this is just the start of that breakout and we're seeing it all play out we broke 28 we're trading at 29 bucks now earnings are coming up here in the beginning of December. So watch out, guys. Last time work did end up breaking 28. It went to 32 bucks, and I really could see that again um, happening here, especially if we get a second wave. We're already in the second wave. If we get more lockdowns, this is a stock that I think will do well. So from 28 to 32 bucks, I'm watching work there. And some stay-at-home stocks here are Shopify. Shopify is doing well up 2% today, closed at 990. Shout out to anybody that did end up taking these plays. I made a stay at home stock video a couple days ago talking about Shopify, Zoom, Netflix, saying how I think they're going to do well. And they've been doing well ever since that video. You know, Shopify, we called it out at 930. Now it's at 990. I think there's more upside up to about 1050 here. Zoom's another one that we called out at 415, under 400. We said it could fill the gap up from 415 to 440. It did exactly that up 6% today. Ended up closing right under 440. And I think, honestly, guys, we're going higher. I think Zoom is now breaking out of the hourly chart downtrend, both the 50, the 180, 
ADSMA, the overall downtrend, and I think 440, if that breaks, they're gonna there's going to be a breakout on Zoom, maybe back up to 460. That is the next level of resistance that I'm looking at here. And Netflix, guys, the king of stay-at-home stocks. Who doesn't watch Netflix when there's a, a shutdown? Most people watch Netflix, guys. Let's just put it that way. Netflix up three quarters of a percent today, up about $3.57. And here on the four hour chart, what we're noticing is a solid base at 470, 480. Now we're looking to fill the gap up to 500, 510, 515, which we've done multiple times from a bounce above 480. So I think Netflix is going straight up to 500. That's my honest opinion, maybe even above 500. As we're seeing lockdowns across the country and the movement to more stay at home for the time being, right? So that's it for the video, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it. Leave a like if you guys did. Subscribe to the channel. Again, we're trying to get 20,000 subscribers here on the channel. And don't forget to claim your four free stocks from Webull valued up to $1,600. All you have to do is deposit $100 using my link down below. You could also get into the Discord chat and the Facebook group. All of those are free, so enjoy the Discord chat, the Facebook group, your four free stocks, all linked down below. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching as always. Stay safe out there, guys. That's the most important thing right now. Have a great weekend. Peace out.